horror games have been making a massive return over the past few years. Alien Isolation, Resident Evil 7, and The Evil Within are just three of many franchises that are reviving a genre that was in decline. And while some of these games might be notably scarier, or maybe even more fun than the others, they all did something that was fantastic. They made you panic. The Evil Within was set out to be an ode to classic horror games like Resident Evil, and it was meant to be a spiritual successor to Resident Evil 4. It was also created by Shinji Mikami, one of the original minds behind the original Resident Evil games. And while The Evil Within would receive mixed reviews on launch, it is certainly sprawled into the gaming space as one of the most exciting throwbacks to a classic franchise in the video game space. The game seethed with atmosphere, it had clunky, frustrating combat, and it had a huge fetish for barbed wire and blood. My kind of girl. And it did pretty well. So, they made a second one. The Evil Within 2 is meant to be bigger and better than the first game, and I mean that literally. But before we jump into the older brother, we gotta talk about the good little boy that started this whole train. The Evil Within was a linear, third-person shooter, horror, and I use that term very loosely, game that was meant to stress players out while they try to manage resources like ammo, health, and other items. Every single hallway or arena that you traveled through in this game was deliberately handcrafted for a specific kind of atmosphere that you were meant to experience. Whoa, what's that? There are meat grinders in the walls? Whoa, whoa what, dude? There's like bombs on the walls? Wow! There's blood on the wall! Basically, there's a lot of crap on the walls. The point is, The Evil Within really focused on what players were supposed to see at all times. If you were meant to see something, it was deliberately put there for you to see it. Sometimes there was even an icon that would come up for you to hold a button, and Sebastian, the main character, would look at whatever is meant to be seen. If the environment was meant to make you feel some sort of emotion, you better believe you're gonna feel that. So, what about the sequel? The Evil Within 2 now opens up the space so it's like a small open world, sprawling with side objectives, different enemy types, and other elements for you to explore. Before triggering specific story moments in the game, you can explore this open area to your heart's little desire. And the map is a decent size for you to do all this extra crap in the game. But look, let's be real here. A lot of game devs and publishers are trying to take old franchises and turn them into open world games. And while this feature works so beautifully for some of these titles, others are at an all-time low. I purchased The Evil Within 2 on sale because I wanted to try it after my time with the first game. And I've enjoyed nearly every single second that I've spent with the game. The open world is condensed enough that you aren't traveling to Mount Doom for every side objective, but large enough to warrant those side objectives. The shooting is fun, the stealth is strategic, and the many different arenas that you'll be fighting enemies in offer a lot of different approaches to combat. There are more environmental hazards that you can use to your advantage, as well as a lot of vantage points that let you see a lot of the things going on around you. So as a third person shooter, it's the <laughs> bee's knees. Those were loud claps. But it's not that scary. What's really strange about this game is the first hour or so, because it's very misleading for players. It has you walking down narrow corridors with no weapons to defend yourself, and you're avoiding a ghost photographer because you can't defend yourself. But this is not how you'll be playing the game. I really don't understand what happened here. The, the first hour of the game was like brimming with atmosphere. It was almost reminiscent of the first game in a lot of ways. Then just throws it all out the window. <clears throat> kind of. There are some moments later throughout the game where you'll find that you're not in combat. You're just kind of walking around while spooky stuff happens around you. It isn't that scary. And at first, yeah, it can be frightening. But once you realize that this isn't the shooty shooty bang bang part of the game, and that you can't really be hurt, it's not that scary. It doesn't do much. There's nothing to be afraid of, just quick flashes of enemies and blood splatters on the wall. So, I guess you could say that I'm really torn with these games. 
On one hand, The Evil Within is a clunky horror game that puts the player in claustrophobic corridors and arenas where you'll be fighting fast, deadly enemies. It was terrifying for many players and provided a decent enough challenge. The second game focuses more on combat. It makes the actual fighting part of the game more fun, but just about everything else suffers. The atmosphere is light, the scares are sparse, and the tension is almost non-existent. Also, why isn't the second game as weird as the first game? I'm not traveling through different dimensions because some spooky man touched my face. Where is the face touch? So this is where I find myself in a paradox with these games. Because The Evil Within 2 suffers in almost every way by being the better game. Mechanically. It's like they forgot the reason for why these games exist in the first place. These games are meant to thrill you. They're meant to make you panic, and the first game does this reasonably well, but The Evil Within 2 just kind of falls flat on its face. So, just like a ruined piece of paper, I'm torn. I don't know how I feel about the new designs of this series. I actually really love the open world gameplay and the combat mechanics, but to have these things included, you sacrifice so much more that the game is meant to be. And it's hard to have both an open world game and amazing tension in it, because players can explore and see whatever they want. And a lot of the encounters that they're gonna have are gonna be able to be played out in so many different ways. If you look at the first game, if you walk down a corridor, a door might bust open with this really intimidating enemy that you're meant to either fight or flight. In the second game, you can usually spot these enemies from so far away and approach the combat however you want. And while the freedom to be able to do this is really refreshing and fun, it doesn't make it scary. I can't tell you how many times I cheesed an enemy in this game because I just sat in a bush, shot a harpoon bolt at the enemy, and then moved to another bush. Sometimes video games go off the beaten path. Sometimes it works remarkably well, sometimes it fails. And The Evil Within 2 is actually the first game where I honestly can't tell if changing the formula like this makes it better or not. I will say this though, it is really fun. I highly recommend this game to fans of Resident Evil 4 because even though it's lacking a lot of the atmosphere and tension that The Evil Within and even Resident Evil 4 had, it feels like it is a sequel to these games. Sebastian and just about nearly every other character is fleshed out much more than they were in the first game. And it's a more personal story, one that I feel players are gonna be more invested in. That's just a guess, I could be wrong. And there's still potential for there to be horror elements here. Sometimes the game does turn into a linear experience where you're being frightened or maybe there's a chase sequence, but it doesn't have enough impact in my opinion. One aspect of the second game that I think took a huge hit from the open world gameplay and the new combat mechanics is the boss fights. They're not necessarily terrible, but the spectacular ones are a lot more spread out, and they're not nearly as challenging as the first game. Although I will say, there's one boss fight that I think is really spectacular. So yeah, there's a lot of good to be had here. I guarantee that if you like this sort of genre and this sort of game, you'll be smiling the whole time you play it. It's a third person shooter that's got me hooked and I'll definitely be playing it for quite some time to come. And I know I just trashed the game quite a bit, but it really is a fun ride. But if you've played the games, what do you think of them? Be sure to tell me, how do you think The Evil Within 2 compares to the first game? Do you like both games? Do you dislike both games? Why? Uh, I, 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 think, I think they're pretty good. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, you can click right here. Oh my gosh, what is that? <gasps> it's character-driven stories in video games. Oh, that's probably really interesting. I would love to watch that right now. And if you want to subscribe for more content, you can click the subscribe button down here to see more content. I need to get better at these outros.